So welcome back to the Cozy Rosie Crochet channel. I have spent all day on the computer and I've decided I'm going to take a little bit of time out to use the knitting machine that I got off of Timu in my opening video. I am familiar with how these machines work and I'm going to show you me setting it up and hopefully cranking out a hat in just under one hour. So it is currently just after half past three in the afternoon. As I said, I've spent all day on the computer getting ready for all three new, well, three new video releases that are coming out over August. So I thought I should get this out, take some time out. I know I could go ahead and make a couple of granny squares or something, but I wanna do something that's gonna tax my brain in a slightly different way. So I'm gonna grab some scrap yarn. Don't judge me for the amount of scrap yarn that I have. It's accumulated over a number of years and we're going to run it through this machine, maybe even crank out a whole hat in one hour. So let's get this opened up. This is it. Oh, I might have it upside down. We have some yarn to use. Oh, that feels bad. I'm assuming these are legs. Instructions, more. Yeah. And then we have a lead, I'm assuming, to do the needles. And then you have your actual machine inside the box as well. So let's get it out of here. These are actually circular knitting needles, which I'm assuming are the same size that's created by this machine so not gonna need those are we right let's find out if we can understand these instructions now this is a toy you may not realize that this is actually marketed as a toy it's not telling us oh here we are here's how to put the feet in so we have in here the feet for the actual knitting machine we even get our own little screwdriver and the feet are going to slot in they literally just slot in like that there is a tiny little hole that we're going to secure the feet on with the screwdriver i'm just going to repeat this with each foot let's have a little suction cup which is why i've taken my normal cover off of this table so that we can suction this to the table. Okay, I'm going to get these added and I'll be back. I've grabbed some paint box yarn, Simply DK. From memory, these are not going to want too big a yarn. There is like a yarn guide that comes with. You get two needles, which we're going to use to weave when we finish our project. And then you get the most interesting looking crochet hook as well. This is a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. So to me, we need to go small on the yarn in this. Now, as you can see, you can't from where you are, there is just a handle that you crank. And what happens is the needles are brought up and around. And the way that that works is it lifts the yarn off and creates a knit stitch each time the needle passes this section here. This goes down here. And of course, I've stuck this to the table. No instructions on how to get that in. This does not feed in. Oh, there we go. There's our yarn feeder and that just sticks out from the front. I'm gonna go obviously for some really loose tension my ball is centre pull, hopefully. So I'm just gonna pop my wall on the ground and feed it through the largest tension and pop my tail through the middle. All of these needles are marked with a number. So this black needle here is number one. I'm gonna weave through number one. Let me change the angle so you can see what I'm doing. So this is needle number one and I've thread the yarn through the largest hole because this affects the tension 
and then we are going to run the yarn through the middle here to the right of this needle and this is how it would normally be sat while we're just setting up we need to weave the yarn through these needles through every other needle so you can see it's going to go this needle is going to drop down and secure that yarn in place we skip this needle and we want to go around that one skip one go around skip go around and we're going to repeat this all the way around until we've worked across every other needle so we go behind one in front of one and it catches the yarn as it goes down you see how here the yarn kind of goes into the machine itself oops make sure that one's going to catch so we're skipping one going round one and skipping one all the way back to that black needle so we should have one empty needle just as we get back to our final or our beginning of where our tail is and i'm going to place the yarn into the holder and now our tension gauge will do most of the work i'm going to make sure that it's still free running pulling out some of my yarn and then we just crank all the way around slowly for this next round because what's going to happen is that it's going through every needle now we don't want any tension on the yarn whilst we do this round till we get all the way back we missed it but <laughs> it's just knit that stitch nice and tight to see what's happened so by getting in nice and tight around this first needle you can see that the yarn has actually gone over the back of the needle it's in the front of the needle and it's about to be that's the end as we just bring this needle past the working yarn here to create a knit on the next round here you can see that it's just a head of that black needle it's going to pop over the back and that's what we're looking for is for this yarn to be brought over the back to create that next knit stitch so it brings up the yarn from underneath and feeds it over these two teeth then as it passes through the yarn it creates the next it's setting up the next stitch if you've ever used a knitting loom you're effectively loom knitting by working in the round and this yarn is just free flowing so this is dk size three weight yarn oh we've just had another round it went past me that's another round done and you just keep cranking See that the knitting is coming out so what we're looking at here is the pearl side or the wrong side and on the other side of the fabric i don't know if you can see you have your knit no you can't and then on the other side of the fabric is the knit stitches now this is really tight if i'm honest and loose at the same time so i'm going to keep cranking for a while i just want to give you an update on the time it's currently five to four so we've been going for just over 20 minutes we've set the machine up and we're already knitting you know what this is quite good fun so i'm going to keep cranking until i have more fabric and i'll be back with you i'm going to change color i have enough length for a single um width is not right the right word single layer hat i think traditionally most people do a double layer for me that is way too warm so all i'm going to do to change color is take my current color out of the yarn feeder and just place that behind and fasten off and literally i'm just leaving it behind the current needle can't remember these words now and i'm feeding through the new yarn and making another tail there where the other one so in between the first needle and the last needle and i'm going to hold this new color just securely for a moment as it goes past and it will pick that up for the next round once you've gone past a few needles 
you can then just make a little knot. Oh, that's a long end. And this is it is as simple as that to change colour in the round. Go underneath that one. I'm just going to do a loose needle, a uh, loose knot. If you're doing a double layer hat, you don't need to worry about your ends. Push those feet back down. And then you just keep going in your new colour and hope it's as free running and keep cranking. So as we get back to that colour change, it just starts knitting in the new colour. I'm just going to do a few rounds of this. Oh, wow, that's wobbly. I'm going to do a few rounds of this colour just to put a little mini brim. This is only a practice. Um, and then we'll have a look to see what we've made and we'll take this off. The fastening off is really easy. You would cut a length that is the width of the circle of your machine and fasten that onto a needle and then weave through each needle in order as it comes around. So I normally wait for it to get past here. So you're gonna effectively do one final row, but you're actually using it with your darning needle. Now, because this is only a single-sided single hat, you will need to create a border along this. So you'd need to then crochet um, an edging or knit your ribbing onto your last stitch. So you can do a run of um, a contrasting colour yarn. So in this instance, because um, my brim is in a different colour, I'm going to fasten off and run. That's my final yarn with that. And I'm going to run a different colour just to allow me to detach. I'm not sewing, not kind of weaving those together That's until I get back to where I just came off. And this is the fun bit. Now, because that's secure and it's knitted all the way through in this new colour, I can just take the yarn out and do one final round. That'll be two, actually, and it will just fall off the machine. And I've secured my final stitches with that contrast colour. And we have knitting. Like many things, it needs a bit of a pull around. But you can see where your final stitch is. They are very loose, these. So I would recommend that you secure them a lot more than just one round. But you, then you can see where your contrasting colour is. The other end, pop those ends in. Where we originally started, to cinch that, you simply just pull it together and it brings the end of the hat together. Just like that. It's not the most exciting hat in the world, is it? But it's just scrap yarn to use up. You could even have a rolled brim. A lot of people like those and you've made like a slouchy beanie. God knows how many rows I've done. Far too many. And then if I was to wanting to secure my final stitches I can use my darning needle no that's a crochet hook and unravel this you should probably do a couple of rounds of contrast color and we're just looking to pick up that last stitch this is why I now now I see this is why they gave you the circular needles because you can pick up the last stitch with your Circular knitting, knitting needles as provided. Put them straight on to knit ribbing. Now I don't knit, unfortunately. No woman who does though. So I could always get her to add on if I really wanted to. And because your tail of your needle is so long, you could do the same with your Tunisian crochet if you want to do Tunisian crochet ribbing. But you're just picking up that last stitch marked by your contrast yarn. You could have done that straight from the machine if you were gonna add them onto these needles. But I want to crochet mine, so I'm just gonna run a, a stitch through so they're all on securely. There we go, in theory, I've set up the machine and made, I could have made a full hat really, I'm not far off a full hat, a whole hat in 
basically 20 minutes because it is now 10 past four in the afternoon. And there we have the fact that this machine actually works. Now, if you would like me to show you different techniques, so if you drop a stitch, how to correct that, because obviously I'm going to drop some here. Um, how you would make, you know, the low, the rows required for a an actual hat if you have one of these machines. Would I recommend it? Do you know what? It's a bit of fun. I know people make actual livings by selling these hats because they are, when they're double thickness, they just literally put the two together. They're really squishy. For me personally, I think the stitches are a bit small and I don't think they look very knit when it's worn because they stretch so much and it's not my personal preference. But there is one thing that this machine does that I would really like to use. And that is the fact you can change between tube knitting and plain knitting. So instead of working in the round, oh sorry, that way around, you can work just a few stitches and create long pieces of knit fabric that you could then create clothes from. And I've seen lots of tube dresses and things like that, that people have done by grafting together lots of knitted squares. And when you change to plain, when you change to plain knitting, the machine will only go, you can then turn back the other way. Whereas you would normally always turn clockwise. With this way, you can turn clockwise and anti-clockwise. It's a slightly different technique for casting on securing and securing the yarn at each ends. I'm happy to show you that if you'd like to learn. I know there are lots of tutorials out there already. I've really enjoyed my little kind of half an hour of playing with this toy and it is marked as a toy. Considering it's unfinished, obviously we've got everything still attached to it. It fits kind of, but you see what I mean about these knit stitches? Maybe it would look better if there were two layers. I don't know, I wouldn't not wear it, but it's more lightweight than the double weight, double width or double thickness. Anyway, I'm going to take that off for a moment. I hope you've enjoyed joining me to find out more about the Centro knitting machine. I know you can get them on Amazon. As I said, I got mine on Timu and it cost me a whole £4.99 or something because I got it on a new shopper special, I think is what it was called. But yeah, it's been good fun. I've really enjoyed this and it's still only quarter past four and I feel like I've used my brain for something else other than typing on a computer. I'm going to be back with you next week winding these two skeins of yarn into cakes because I want to make some crochet hats ready for the cooler weather too. These are the yarns that I bought while I was at the Summer Wool Festival hosting my workshops there and I'm excited because next weekend I'm going to be in Newcastle for another yarn festival whose name escapes me. I'm going to say North, it's not called that at all, but I'm going to be in Newcastle. So if you're heading over to that yarn festival, do come over and say hi. I'm going to be in the workshop area hosting two different workshops. There are tickets still available. First workshop is going to be the making the most of your granny squares. And the second workshop will be the premiere of the wavy workshop. Thank you for joining me today. I'll see you in the next video where I'll be winding these yarn cakes.